Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more it's Lear speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to MKR, a new MIDI step sequencer. Um, it's quite nice really, and I know there are a lot of others as well in the iOS uh, um, space, but um, it's always good to have um, a choice and it has a lot of functionality as well. Therefore this first video is going to be an introduction uh, first tutorial and then we are going deeper on how to use all the different functionalities before i continue i would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel thank you very much so i'm going to demonstrate how to use it inside rumbo actually instead of using uh, as i normally do aum it's nice to actually um, see Drumbo in action as a host as well. So let's click on the main track. But before we do actually that, let's ensure that we have a new project. So we go to that main track. And then before track number one, we're going to insert the sequencer. And there you are. One other thing I really love of um, Drumbo is that you can search for anything um, here. So there's any brings back instrument, MIDI processor, audio processor, etc, etc. So it's really, really straightforward. Now, the other thing I want to do straight away is connect the input of track number one to the first output here of MKR, like so. So it, it just shows you that you have also multiple outputs straight away, and we're going to do that also for uh, track number two, okay? Then we're going to tr inside track number one um, here. And we are going to add a plug, my favorite one, April. There you are. Then we go to the second track, and we're going to do something similar for a bass, and we're going to choose John Bass. Okay, let's go back to the first, to the main track, and let's open the MIDI step sequencer. There it is. So you can see, nice um, user interface, but there is lots on really lot. First of all, you have 64 patterns and they are organized down here. You can see pattern number one to eight and then you have banks here as well. Okay. Each pattern is organized by 16 lanes and then each lane can have up to 20 different steps. It's quite interesting as a sequencer, you have different play modes, for example, play mode on pattern, clip, range, um, random and then um, you, here on the right hand side you can go into edit mode for example where you can change the output port to the channel uh, the length in terms of steps yeah, but you have an interesting here set of functionality which allows you to have play cycle skip cycle offset and then you can change of course the pitch the velocity the probability delay and duration Okay, you can also maximize this window. Look how nice it, it really is. And down here, it shows you the keyboard, which you can use to preview. You set on preview here, and then, uh, of course, you can play directly on it. So that is really, really nice. You can go in sequencer mode here. And what is really nice is, is that in sequencer mode, you can move to play mode clip, and you have 32 clips here. And then for each clip, you also have a number of steps, which you can further configure in terms of length and also repetition. Really, really nice. And then you also have a performance mode. But let's stick to uh, the home uh, screen. And one other thing I wanted to show you or point out is that you have a groups mode here. So you can group, uh, for example, lane and mute them as well as you like. So really nice. So let me show you, first of all, how we can create a simple bit for this first tutorial as it is an introduction. Well, let's create a melody. So let's just um, click on some of the steps. As you can see, you start from C4, then click on one, click and drag up and down, and you can change also uh, the pitch. So nice and simple. Another concept to grasp straight away is that you can make changes a step level, or if you highlight the lane or select the lane, you can make all the changes for that entire lane. Okay, so let's um, play now. Okay, so as you can see, the first lane is playing. The output is captured by track number one, where we have that April plug. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more interesting. So let's um, create a little bit of a bass. Now, if I play that like so, look what happened. 
Only track number one is playing, and this is because by default each lane uh, um, are configured to actually um, play on the output here, which is number one. So go in edit mode, select uh, uh, that second track and move it to output number two, and then let's play. Now, the pitch of that bass is a, is a bit too high, right? So, of course, we can go inside the truck here and add a pitch module to lower it down. But um, another way is, for example, click and hold and lower the pitch here. Uh, yourself, uh, click, hold and drag down with your mouse or your fingers, depending on what you're using as uh, uh, controls. So let's play again. Nice, isn't it? So let's connect the first truck now to output number three. Let's go inside that truck again and let's search for FAC drum kit. Why not? Okay. So let's go back to the main truck inside the uh, step sequencer. Okay. Let's go to line number three, ensure the output is on three. Then let's go to uh, pitch. You see this keyboard here. And let me show you. You can click on preview and start to test at what level the FAC drum kit will respond. So in this case, C3. Now you could remove preview, add steps as um, manually, as I showed you a moment ago, or you can go to the first step like, um, like so and press C3, like that. Then you can say, well, all right, I skipped that. And then I put C sharp three here for that snare, and then I skip there. Then I put the note again by default, or or no? Okay, click back on it, click again to remove it. C three again, pause, C three sharp, and you could continue like that, right? So, and of course, it depends on your preference. Uh, for me, it's quick actually to select to select them like so. Okay. So, um, let's click play. So as you can see, very, very straightforward, very simple to create a pattern. And you can continue like that, right? So for example, let's say we go to track number three. Let's increase the number of voices because I want to add something else on the drum kit. And um, let's go back to uh, the step sequencer. Let's um, um, actually use lane number four. And for that, again, output number three. Okay, and let's go to pitch and let's go on preview mode so it doesn't insert a note. Let's lower this down again. Okay, we can use um, A2. Yeah. Like so. So. I'm going to stop here for this first introduction. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And I'll show you at the next tutorial where we'll continue how uh, to use and explore this fantastic new MIDI step sequencer. Thank you very much. Bye.